Good evening and welcome to all of you. I'm Ann Ponder, Chancellor at UNC Asheville. On this especially joyous occasion, I have already had the opportunity to welcome and visit with many of you earlier this evening. <clears throat> but before the evening's end, before you leave tonight, please make sure that I have the opportunity to greet you if I have not already because this place is full of friends of UNC Asheville. I really want to thank you for being with us tonight to celebrate the student experience at UNC Asheville. You know, our, our university is often cited for our intellectual and academic programs. Tonight, you've had a chance to taste the rich offerings of UNC Asheville's outside of the classroom, an equally rigorous and robust educational experience. It's really important to note that for students at UNC Asheville, this is not actually two distinct experiences, one inside and one outside the classroom. Because so many of our students are still in place around the building, but a few have migrated here with you. If you are a student at UNC Asheville, I'd like for you to stand and do this so that we can thank you for your hosting. You see, what you experience tonight is a sampling of one seamless, fully integrated experience that guides students in the practical application of skills they learn in classes and clubs, through field trips and athletics and leadership workshops, during internships and volunteer experiences. The result is a broadly educated graduate who is ready not just to work but to lead through innovative and thoughtful and engaged citizenship. These graduates are ready to adapt to the needs of the future, and we are only beginning to imagine what they are going to do next. I really want to thank all of our colleagues in student affairs who allowed us, if just for a moment, to be part of the total UNC Asheville experience and assure them and this for our evening both a source of learning and environment. So if you are on the student affairs staff, or if you are on the staff of the university, please stand and do this. <laughs> it is appropriate that we celebrate innovative, engaged, and thoughtful citizenship as we stand at the foot of this extraordinary work of art. In so many ways, this work of art behind me represents the best of the UNC Asheville tradition. This painting is a recreation of Raphael's extraordinary School of Athens, painted over five centuries ago and housed in the Vatican. This work for UNC Asheville was carried out by Professor S. Tucker Cook, who recently retired following a distinguished tenure of slightly less than five centuries, <clears throat> only four plus a little decades. Would you please uh, stand, Tucker, so that we can admire and thank you for this great work. At the painting center <clears throat> are some philosophers from the ancient world, and there's actually scholarly debate still continuing these 500 years later after the creation of the School of Athens as to who the many other figures might be. Of the more than 50 characters depicted here, there is scholarly agreement on only about a dozen of them. So in the end, I can't help wondering if Raphael, in fact, is calling the person looking at the piece of art to see themselves 
to see ourselves in this masterwork, to see ourselves in innovative, thoughtful, and engaged citizenry. Well, now the painting in front of me, the assembly in front of me, looks like the school of Asheville instead of the school of Athens. I see here men and women gathered whose service to this community, much like the philosophers of old, is far-reaching and will last for generations. And I'd like to take it just a few minutes to recognize a few of them. First, co-hosts for this evening are our members of our Board of Trustees. UNC Asheville's Board of Trustees members, would you stand and remain standing while I call your name? Jim Buckner, trustee, class of 71. Janice Brummett, Sue McClinton, Audrey Bird Mosley, Doug Orr, Sissy Stevens, Pam Turner, Al Whitesides, and our newest member, Cortland Mercer, student body president. We have some former members of the Board of Trustees with us this evening. Luther Barnhart, please stand. Leslie Coleman, please stand. And Tarek Glenn, class of 2006, please stand. And now fresh from what is shaping up to be one of the most challenging legislative seasons uh, in our state's history, we welcome back from Raleigh, Jane Wilden. Please stand, Jane. From the Board of Governors of the University System, please recognize Dr. Adelaide Daniels Key. From the city of Asheville, we are delighted to welcome our beloved mayor, the Honorable Terry Bellamy. I'm also glad to recognize John Mitchell, class of 2004, joining us this evening as Senator Burr, Richard Burr's field representative. Welcome, John. Sitting right next to John is another staffer for Senator Burr who doesn't hire anyone unless they've graduated from UNC Asheville, Steve Green. I also want to thank, on behalf of the university, the members of the many volunteer boards, the leadership you provide, if you are present here this evening and a member of the UNC Asheville Foundation Board, please stand. And if you are here this evening and a member of our National Alumni Council, would you please stand? We are also honored to have with us tonight two of our university's former chancellors. Please help me welcome and thank, would you each stand, David Brown and Samuel Schumann. Most importantly to each person present, thank you for your service to UNC Asheville to our community, and to our state. It is in celebration of this kind of engaged citizenship that tonight we honor two people whose impact on education and the arts has forever changed our national culture. Dr. Les Purse and Doc Watson. Earlier this evening, many of you had an opportunity to meet Les Purse as he and I greeted you upstairs while Doc Watson is unable to join us this evening, we will be delighted to welcome David Holt to represent him. But tomorrow morning, we will continue a tradition 
begun by our university's second chancellor, David Brown. Since 1986, your university has honored 56 women and men whose service to the community, be it local or global, has transformed humanity. This tradition recognizes and draws close to the university those whose life's purpose and life's work closely resemble the ideals of a liberal arts education in a civil society. Tonight, we are honored to have with us one past honorary degree recipient, Dr. Adelaide Daniels Key. Please stand one more time. She's also a member of the UNC Board of Governors. We also welcome the daughter of a past honorary degree recipient. Uh, that recipient was Dr. Ernest Mills, and his daughter, Pam Turner, is here. Uh, please stand, Pam. <laughs> Thank you so much. It is always my greatest pleasure to welcome to the podium a member of our community who is a model of innovative, thoughtful, engaged citizenship, the chair of our Board of Trustees, Mr. Al Whitesides. I had to look back at my wife after the introduction, who surely looked like, is, is he the same Al I've lived with for over 40 years? <laughs> Good evening. My colleagues on the Board of Trustees and I are honored to have you with us as we celebrate this extraordinary university. As it says in our name, this is Asheville's university. However, I have a confession to make. I did not graduate from UNC Asheville. I am, however, a graduate of another UNC system school North Carolina Central University. But while I'm a proud North Carolina Central Eagle, I'm also a proud UNC Asheville Bulldog. <laughs> and tonight, as I look out at you, I see a number of alumni who are also proud Bulldogs. My fellow trustee, Audrey Bird Mosley, class of 1974. Audrey is deputy counsel for the National Academy of Sciences in Washington, D.C. Dr. Greg Glantz, class of 1982, and Sherry Glantz, class of 2000, who are not only themselves graduates of UNC Asheville, but are the proud parents of a soon-to-be alumni, Sherry, I mean Sarah Glantz, who is graduating summa cum laude tomorrow. She deserves it. And Betty Seifert from Charlotte, a graduate in the class of 1983. Betty is lending her noted civic leadership in the Queen City to serve her alma mater as a member of the National Alumni Council and the university's Women in Philanthropy Initiative. And Jennifer Mayer, class of 2004. Jennifer, would you please stand? Oh, there she is, she raised her hand. Jennifer, thanks. Jennifer manages the highly successful and community-minded Charlotte Street Computers here in Asheville. She has donated reconditioned computers back to her alma mater for use in the residence hall computer labs. Thank you again. And as was mentioned early about Steve, but they are also Catherine and Steve Green, class of 1999 and 2000. Would both please stand? Catherine is a local accountant, and Steve serves our region as, senior, as Senator Richard Burr's Western Director. 
and recent graduate, Tarek Glenn, class of 2006. Tarek, would you please stand? I saw him, so there he is. <laughs> Tarek now works in the Human Resources Office of Mission Hospitals. These and so many other graduates speak of their experiences at UNC Asheville with passion, intensity, and pride. But as I look around this room, I also see Janice and Joe Brummett, Ray and Sue McClinton, Marcy and Jim Hegwin, Ruth and Luther Bernhardt, Steve and Francine Geis. They did not graduate from UNC Asheville, but they embrace it as if they did. They understand how connected this university has been to Asheville and how the communities and universities' futures are forever bound. Tomorrow, I'm going to share with our graduates the story of the college's first graduating class, the class of 1929. That year, 29 students, five men and 24 women, received diplomas from what was then Buncombe County Junior College. You can imagine that the class of 1929 faced much of the same uncertainty that the class of 2009 faces. What I am not sharing tomorrow is that the class of 1929 was almost the college's only class. By the next year, times were so tough that faculty, ever committed to the students, accepted eggs, cheese, milk, and bread as tuition if that was all a student had. This college struggled in its early years. What saved it time and time again was this community. In the late 1950s, Ashevillians ever even voted by an overwhelming majority to tax themselves so the college could expand. That is why the university is located where it is today, thanks to this great community. Folks, UNC Asheville is Asheville's university. Like generations of community leaders, who came before us, we must do everything in our power to support and advocate for UNC Asheville. Fortunately, we are nowhere close to closing our doors, but our university needs to be better known throughout our community and our state for the value it brings and the talented graduates it produces. Thanks to the hard work tonight of the students and staff, we each have a more robust understanding of a true UNC Asheville student experience. And so, in the days and weeks ahead, I call on you to talk about what you have seen and experienced here tonight. Share it with enthusiasm. Brag about our students and about UNC Asheville, Asheville's university. One leader familiar to most of us who understands well the value of UNC Asheville in this, in this community and state is our mayor, the Honorable Terry Bellamy, a graduate of UNC Charlotte, a sister institution in the UNC system. Terry has herself become a spirited, adopted bulldog. <laughs> Terry, we are honored that as in years past, you have chosen to spend this evening celebration of Asheville University. May I welcome you to the podium for your remarks. Good evening, everyone. 
Thank you, Al. I appreciate that warm introduction. I want to start my remarks by first recognizing our city manager, Gary Jackson. Gary, if you will please stand this evening. He's around here somewhere. Is he with Kathy putting up things? <laughs> Gary's wife, Kathy Jackson, also works for the university, so I'm sure she's doing, he has a honey-do list to help her be successful. <laughs> Tonight is truly my pleasure to be a part of this program. When I think about the activities that I do as mayor, this is one of the highlights coming to the University of North Carolina at Asheville, and I'll tell you why. The trustees, my hat's off to you. I, I need to get another saying, my, because I don't wear hats. You get a at a girl <laughs> for hiring Ann Ponder. You proved Thomas Wolfe wrong again when, you said, when he said that you can't come home again. Ann Ponder has opened her heart, not only to the city of Asheville, but to this mayor. So please join with me to recognize Ann Ponder for her leadership in this university. My challenge was to talk about the University of North Carolina in Asheville, and I had to cut down the number of things that I could talk about that the university is doing for our community. When I think about what it's doing in the form of education, just last year, our community was impacted negatively when the Asheville Buncombe, Vision, this, um, the Asheville Buncombe Education Coalition decided to close its doors. It was a program that was really being tracked and traced by the students over here at UNCA, so we, could, we had the data to show that it was successful, but it lost its funding. UNC, Ash, UNC Asheville staff didn't sit idly by and let that happen to our community. The math department came together and decided we have a program to benefit our community. UNC Asheville's math department has created a tutorial program that's going to help train people how to be better tutors. That's not only going to be successful for our schools, the Asheville City School as well as Buckham County Schools, they've already started talking to Mission Hospital to see how they can train their staffs who are currently CNAs, how they can become nurses. And so it's a stepping stone for them to use. When I think about AVID, which is a program that says in the Asheville City Schools program, in the Astro City Schools, we have this program that actually helps our students be successful. They start in the ninth grade, and those students are exposed to the students here at UNCA, and they collaborate on projects. They also get help in the classroom as well. And tonight, I didn't come alone. I brought five students to assist me, to let them see the University of North Carolina at Asheville for themselves. But they told me, oh, we've been here before. It's no big deal. And tonight, I want to highlight some of the work that UNCA has done to help with those students. Through AVID, as well as the Asheville, through Asheville Middle School, they have a program over there where they go and actually tutor for two afternoons a week in the school system to help make sure middle school students have the assistance that they need to be self-successful. Also, they have a co-op program with teachers to help them with math at the high school level, and we're proud about that cooperation. The last thing I would like to say about the education for our students here at the, with the partnership with the students here at UNC Asheville is the fact that there's a teaching fellows program that two afternoons per week at the Hillcrest Enrichment Program, we have students from here to go over to the Hillcrest Enrichment Program. Next week, how many of you know what's happening at McCormick Field? I know Janet Cohn's probably upset that you, you all did not raise your hand. Next week, through a partnership with the University of North Carolina at Asheville and the city of Asheville, the baseball tournament is going to be held at McCormick Field, and so we invite you to come there. And that's one of the partnerships that's been developed between the city of Asheville and the University of North Carolina at Asheville. Another program that we're proud of is the city of Asheville is developing an athletic commission. And guess whose idea it was? Janet Combs and Wilma Sherrill. In order for that commission to oversee the opportunities for the city of Asheville to collaborate with UNC Asheville to get more tourists here. How many of you know that having tournaments in the city of Asheville is pretty big business? Well, your athletic director and your former, one of your former vice presidents, they understand that and they understand about the collaboration and how that's important. How many of you heard about HUB? 
Dave, you're doing a great job. Have more hands on that one. The Hub is a collaborative program on economic development that's really taking our community. Not only is it moving us forward, it's pulling us together. And that was started in part by many collabor collaborators, but Dave Brown is really leading that effort and doing a wonderful job in making that happen. And Janet Brum Br Janice Brummett is also helping with that as one of the co-chairs. Another program that involves UNC Asheville is the City of Asheville's GIS program. How many of you know where Rentsy is located? Right here on the campus of the University of North Carolina at Asheville. And that significant program provides the GIS the City of Asheville staff is using to make the mapping available to our community. It's keeping our staff on the cutting edge of technology. See, the University of North Carolina at Asheville isn't just for Asheville students, the students who come into our community, is not just one of the best liberal arts universities in the country. It's an asset to our community. How many of you know what this says up here? Janice, what does that say? I will lift up my eyes to the hills. Why is that so important? It is the same as on the city of Asheville's shield as well. There's a, collaborative, there's a collaboration bef like never before. It's to have us together, we have the same saying. And I think that speaks volumes about who we are as a university and who we are as a community. That we have the same values in the education, the environment, and economic development, making sure that our community moves forward together. And as I've said before, I didn't come to tonight alone. I brought, I brought five students with me to expose them to the University of North Carolina at Asheville. And to my surprise, they had already been here to experience what this university has to offer because you're doing such a good job reaching out into the community. So tonight, would you please recognize the individuals who I've brought with me and I would like to introduce them. They are James Smith, who is an Asheville High School senior. He spent two years in Kayla as well as at three years with Abbott. Anise Smith, who is an Asheville High School junior who spent two years with Kayla and three years with Abbott. I have three students from Cane Creek Middle School out in the county. Rachel Harris, who's a seventh grader, Thomas Blakely, who's also a seventh grader, and Nelson Stripple, who are seventh graders. And the University of North Carolina at Asheville want them to have a little taste of the college experience, and so I have something special for them. Chancellor Ponder, the city of Asheville, that is the whole city of Asheville in all its glory, as well as its challenges, celebrates with you tonight. A successful year in which UNC Asheville students, faculty, and staff have used their exceptional talents, not selfishly for their own benefit, but selflessly for the benefit of all. We are proud to call the University of North Carolina ours. Thank you so very much for all that you do for our community. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you also to Anise, Rachel, James, Nelson and Thomas for being the guests of the mayor this evening. I'd like to be the first to say that we will warmly welcome your application for admission to UNC Asheville when you contemplate your own college selection. Thanks for being here tonight. This evening, we honor Arthel L. Watson, whom we all would recognize as Doc, and Dr. Les Purse, President of the Evergreen State College in Olympia, Washington, 
Although Doc Watson cannot join us this evening, I'd like to tell you why the committee that recommends honorary degree recipients to the Board of Trustees and why our trustees are so enthusiastic about our selection and honors this year. Legendary musician Doc Watson's signature playing style and traditional mountain roots have propelled him to an almost mythical patriarchal role in American folk and bluegrass music. He has won seven Grammy Awards, one with David Holt, a Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award, the National Medal of Arts, and the North Carolina Award in the Arts. Annually, he hosts and performs at the Merle Watson Memorial Festival, or Merle Fest, in Wilkesboro, honoring his late son and playing partner. Blind since infancy, Doc attended the Governor Moorhead School for the Blind in Raleigh. Music was always his first love. And spurred by the growing folk revival of the 1960s, remembered by some of us, he launched his professional career. As you are well aware, especially if you have had the pleasure of being among the audiences hearing him, Doc has toured and recorded to rave reviews ever since. Born in 1923 in Deep Gap, a Watauga County community, Doc's family was no stranger to music. His mother sang secular and religious songs, and his father played the banjo. From humble origins and armed with the knowledge that music can see vistas that the eyes can only imagine, Doc Watson has a rich career playing concerts and clubs, colleges and festivals, including the Newport Folk Festival and Carnegie Hall. Europe, Asia, and Africa have warmly received his music. Today, Doc Watson's very full life is centered on the North Carolina mountains, where he lives on the land homesteaded by his great-great-grandfather. David Holt, four-time Grammy Award-winning musician, storyteller, and collaborator with Doc Watson, joins us here tonight to speak on behalf of his good friend. Please welcome to the podium, David Holt. Thank you. March 3rd, uh, this last March 3rd, Doc turned 86. And he will be here tomorrow, I uh, want to tell you that. And we still are performing. We just played in uh, St. Louis last week and be at the Biltmore House uh, August 4th. I first met Doc in 1972. Uh, I was just a you know, neophyte in the music, and I, he was backstage at a festival in Reedsville, North Carolina, sitting out there in a little arbor by himself. And I went up and just started talking to him. I would loved his music since I was in high school. And I asked him, after we talked for a while, I said, Doc, how do blind people dream? He said, we dream in feelings, just pure feelings. It took me 30 years to ask him, to think about, to ask him, did he mean feelings of the heart, or, which I thought is what he meant, or feelings of the fingertips. And he said, I meant both of those things. And Doc is a guy who is very close to his feelings. His feelings are really right on his sleeve, and he can really access them and put them into his music in an uncanny way to really move his listeners. That's one of his great strengths. Now, in the 1960s, when he came out on the folk scene, people had never heard the guitar flat pick like that before. We hear it now all the time, but nobody had heard that before. So it was a, sort of a revolution in guitar playing. And anybody who's played the guitar for the last 40 years has been influenced by Doc Watson one way or another, even if they don't even know it. But it's not just the groundbreaking guitar technique that Doc brought to us. It's, it's a deep musical sense. He's the most musical person I have ever met. And I met some very musical people. He, he knows what notes to leave in and what notes to take out. And so all of his solos kind of tell a story. And you can really listen and, and just be completely insor- absorbed the way he is. Because since he's blind, he is a great listener. And he really inhabits every note that he plays. Doc hates to be described as legendary or a living legend or anything like that. Uh, but since he's not here... Uh, (laughs) I can tell you that he's one of America's great musicians of of any era, of any style of music. And and I think I can safely say that he's certainly one of America's greatest folk musicians. If you made a list of people, I started to do this earlier, of 
who are the who are the folk musicians that changed their genre of music, changed it forever after they came on the scene? They would be Muddy Waters, Blind Blake, Lead Belly, Jimmy Rogers, the Carter Family, Woody Guthrie, Merle Travis, Robert Johnson, Fiddlin' Arthur Smith, Earl Scruggs, and Doc Watson. And I, and Bill Monroe. Did I say Bill Monroe? And I would venture to say that Doc musically is at the top of that heap, as far as I'm concerned. Not only is he a great guitarist, but he's a fabulous singer. At 86, he's still singing beautifully, and as I said before, he's able to put so much feeling in his music that it reaches out to people, and he can play, you know, a lot of different styles of music. He can play bluegrass or old time or blues and pull it all together so that he can make an old song sound new and a new song sound traditional. I was thinking earlier, you know, if I had been born in a later era, the two people I would want to meet in American history would be Mark Twain and Doc Watson. And so you can imagine how happy I am to have spent the last 12 years playing with Doc, uh, pretty much all of his shows, and to count him as a friend. I know he'd be deeply honored to get this honorary doctorate because he went to the Moorhead School, but he dropped out when he was 10 years old because he was so poorly treated there. And he educated himself, educated himself. He's a very intelligent guy, so he's you know, quite educated and the honorary doctorate means a lot to him. And I'm particularly glad that he's gotten this degree because he uh, received another one from UNC Chapel Hill and I can now call him Dr. Dr. Doc. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, David. So tomorrow, when all of us are at commencement and when at the reception we see a Doc Watson, let's all call him Dr. Dr. Doc. <laughs> uh, also, uh, David has a program coming up soon on the 75th anniversary of the Blue Ridge Parkway. It'll be broadcast later this month on UNCTV. And now you've met David Holt, so please watch that. When naming the luminaries in the universe of liberal arts education, Dr. Thomas L. Peirce, known to many of us as Les, quickly comes to mind. Dr. Peirce is known for living the values he espouses, for bringing the inherent treasure of the liberal arts to the practical application of issues and opportunities facing the opening decade of the 21st century. Tomorrow morning's commencement speaker, Dr. Peirce, was appointed president of the Evergreen State College in Olympia, Washington, almost a decade ago. So he's been a gooey duck almost that long. He also held positions at Washington State University and uh, Idaho State University. Dr. Peirce has led the Evergreen State College to national prominence for its innovative academic programs, diversity initiatives, and commitment to sustainability in keeping the evergreen liberal arts mission. Dr. Peirce encourages community engagement and academic programs that examine issues of diversity, social justice, and equity through the lenses of arts, sciences, and the humanities. One measure of Les Peirce's esteem is the number of colleges and universities that have adapted elements of the evergreen model to campuses throughout the world. Civic life and the well-being of communities have always attracted Les's imagination and his concerted effort. He served as the first black elected official in the state of Idaho he is one of the founding members of the Council of Public Liberal Arts Colleges, now newly relocated its national office on our campus. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2009 UNC Asheville Honorand and commencement speaker, Dr. Thomas L. Peirce. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Wow, after that introduction, I can't wait to hear what I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> Chancellor Ponder, Mayor, Mayor Bellamy, um, 
old friends, David and Sam, and uh, so many of the, the friends that I've had the opportunity to work in this wonderful profession with for the last 20 plus years. Thank you so much. Um, what a marvelous evening. Um, what a marvelous honor. You know, it's been a pretty tough year for all of us in public higher education. It's been a tough year for all of us personally in our lives. The economic downturn touches every aspect of our lives here in America and in the globe. And when my staff and I are working on a particular tough problem and people are whining, I always say, hey, wait a minute, everybody. We have it great. Think about the opportunity that we have every day to work with young, optimistic people who aspire to great things in their education, that are hopeful, that think that they're bulletproof, that have an idea a minute, that are rebellious, that are cooperative, that are loving, that are joyous, that are adventuresome. And we do it all, in my case, on a thousand acres on the Puget Sound. It's pretty extraordinary, everyone. Um, and the wonderful thing, having traveled around the country to many of my sister Coplac institutions, when I get off the plane and walk off, walk onto a public liberal arts campus, I get the same feel that I get at the Evergreen State College. That sense of openness and engagement and joy and a sense of welcome. One of my dreams has been for the last 15 years to come to Asheville. I got close a couple of times and never made it. But I have to tell you all, your hospitality uh, the joy that shows in your eyes and the students, how proud they are of this institution and how proud the faculty obviously are and the supporters here, the foundation and the trustees. You know, what an extraordinary thing to be a part of public institutions that can offer a high quality education to the kid from the hills, or the kids from the city. In my case, I always say from the kid from Pomeroy, which is out in the wheat fields of eastern Washington, or the kid from inner, in the inner city of Seattle that couldn't go to one of our public, one of our private schools. Didn't have the resources to be able to do that. It has always been a challenge for all of us in the Council of Public Liberal Arts Colleges to convince our legislators that the opportunity to have intensive, strong, high quality liberal arts experience for citizens of our states should be a part of the total mix of the higher education system. But I'm proud to say that in the last 15 or 20 years, we've really made some progress. And it gives me great joy because at my college, we're grounded in the idea of interdisciplinary education. We have no departments, we don't give grades, we give intense evaluations, and we have no requirements when students come. And as I tell parents and students all the time, don't confuse that with lack of rigor, because uh, it's an intensely rigorous place once you choose your course. And I think the reason why I have loved the experience so much and jumped in with both feet is because that's really how I've lived my life, interdisciplinarily. When I found out I was going to be here with Doc Watson, my kids and my wife, they just giggled and laughed. My idol? I've been a strummer and a picker and a lover of folk music and bluegrass and blues and jazz all my life. And at one point in my life, in my senior year, my buddy, who's been my lifelong music partner and, and close, close friend, said, are we going to go on the road or are we going to go on to graduate school? <laughs> <laughs> and 
And we opted for graduate school only because we had both been poor. And we decided we don't want to be poor anymore. And maybe we can get a profession, still do our music, and at some point do nothing but music. And I want you all to know that the day I retire from this job, that is exactly what I will be doing. Have no doubt about it. So you can imagine how excited I was to meet David. And I thought, that Anne, what a wonderful, wonderful gift to give me. But, you know, the journey of life and what we aspire to be, the idea of being able to have access to education has the ability to transform and set us on a path like we could never imagine. That's why it's been such a contentious issue in our country and in any country because education is power. Education is free. Education opens your doors to be able to be a great musician, an artist, a teacher, whatever you want to be. And anything that I've done in this field has really come from the growing awareness over the years of the importance of being able to ensure that in our democracy, every kid has the opportunity to get the kind of education they want. And that to have an intense, small, high quality, arts and science kind of an opportunity for a kid from anywhere is a critical piece of that puzzle of higher education. And I've just gone along on the ride and had the pleasure of meeting wonderful people like Ann um, and all of my colleagues, Bill, and all of the work that we've had the chance to do over these years. And I want you all to know how honored I feel that, that, you, would, that you would give me this honor. Um, it, 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 I always say that, uh, tell my kids, I said, I don't care what you do, but love your work. And I love mine, everyone. So I'm deeply honored. And thank you for your marvelous welcome and this incredible student union that you have. Students, thank you for your warmth and the, the, the I love the dorms. I said, the dorms really look like this? <laughs> Are they, they're different from Evergreen. <laughs> so with that, I want to say thank you very much. And I look forward to seeing many of you tomorrow. And go Bulldogs. Look at that Bulldog. I love that. Isn't that something? Thank you. <laughs>
It is the image of the commencement iris that will linger. And so, as you depart your university this evening, we have an iris for you. Inspired by the remarks of Les Peirce and in the joy of celebrating Doc Watson, we want to share with you a blue commencement iris of your own. It's the same commencement iris that I had the honor of presenting earlier this afternoon to a few of our students at the Donning of the Stoles event. We hope that this bulb, I'm going to show you one, suitably potted for transplanting, already ready to grow. We want you to know that it is reaching for the sky. Place it in your garden, tend it, nurture it, and let it remind you of UNC Asheville and the May commencement. Thank you so much for coming this evening. I now invite you to join me in a favorite UNC Asheville tradition. There are two parts to the remainder of our evening. First, the singing of our alma mater, Carol Mars, class of 1993, and a member of the UNC Asheville staff will lead us in singing the alma mater, the words of which are printed on page three of your program. Carol will be singing from the landing of the stairs to your left. Doesn't she look ethereal? <laughs> uh, following her uh, leading us through the alma mater, I invite you to continue to join each other's company and to join us for dessert in the adjoining room to your right. Once again, thank you for coming this evening, and would you please stand and join me in singing our alma mater. Hail our alma mater, hail UNCA, learning be your watchword, greatness be your Thank you and good night.